I want to continue to explore the healing powers of fungi. I've learned of another mushroom that's been used for thousands of years to bring people enlightenment and unity. Psilocybin and other psychedelics are now being used in new ways. I've connected with psychologist Dr. John Verveek, who studies how psychedelics can change our minds. How do psychedelics affect the brain? What you can do with psychedelics is you can expand the number of states that the brain can get into. And then this can introduce what's called cognitive flexibility into people's cognition. Why are psychedelics being studied today? There's some preliminary but growing evidence that this can help with certain issues, people dealing with PTSD, uh, people dealing with uh, depression, uh, people dealing with very kinds, various kinds of addictions. Psychedelics are thought to have been used by humans worldwide for centuries. Some people have now started taking low doses of psychedelics or other drugs, a practice called microdosing. Why are people doing this? I think more and more people want to, if you'll allow me to put a word on it, they want to start cultivating wisdom. Psilocybin could improve your insight, right? Improve your, the reduction of your egocentrism, right? your ability to pick up on other people's perspectives, and also enhance your capacity for self-transcendence, which is what you need to overcome self-deception. And I would say that's the core of wisdom. Interesting. John's research into microdosing in the mind is fascinating. But I want to meet with someone who has started microdosing to learn firsthand about their experience. My name is Tom Brennan. I'm interested in microdosing as an exploratory way to uh, increase consciousness. What has your experience been like since you began microdosing? In, in the last like three years, uh, when I started microdosing, which is eating just a very small quantity of uh, psilocybin mushrooms, you get an experience where your perception is just slightly altered. And I've found that it actually makes me more attentive and able to focus on problems. How prevalent is microdosing? People in Silicon Valley, other business leaders have already admitted now to microdosing on a regular basis. So how is it done? These are the mushrooms, which I'll weigh on a uh, digital gram scale to 0.5 grams, then I'll take them, put them in the spice grinder. Okay, now they're all ground up in the glass. Yummy. A little orange juice, make it a little more palatable. A little stir. Down the hatch. Mm. Onset is about uh, 40 minutes. Uh, from start to finish, it's about six hours. With a microdose like this, at this level, it's pretty minor. I'll be there in a 20, 20 30 minutes. See you later. <laughs> what are the psychological benefits? Uh, it has a calming effect, and it also uh, has an, an empathogen effect. Uh, similar to MDMA, where it makes you feel better about other people. So definitely reduce anxiety in me. Do you consider yourself high? In a higher state of consciousness, but not high. So it's mind expanding as opposed to escapism. It's a helpful and beneficial compound that is good for everybody. What change could someone who's decided to start microdosing expect to see in themselves? Uh, intention is critical. So what you expect or want out of the compound seems to happen, even though that does sound a little on the unscientific side. I've found it, in my experience, that it, what I expect or want from it, it seems to give to me. Tom's anecdotal evidence is interesting. I'd like to conduct a psilocybin microdosing experiment, but without access to legal forms of the drug to test, I'll remain an interested observer for now. <laughs>